city a night of pure chaos. This is your warning. Leave the area. Disperse. People pushing the limit with police. Racial tensions. On the pastor, a pastor who watched his church burn down. He is speaking out ahead. But first, the Boston bomb. Yesterday, organizers pitched participants in the largest peaceful march yet on a new strategy, one they believe to tie up traffic all over St. Louis. We must work, in the words of New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton, to really see each other. Perhaps the reason we struggle as a nation is because we've come to see only what we represent at face value. Instead of who we are, we simply must see the people we serve. But the seeing needs to flow in both directions. Citizens also need to really see the men and women of law enforcement. They need to see what the police see through their windshields and as they walk down the street. They need to see the risks and dangers of law enforcement encountered on every typical late night shift. They need to understand the difficult and frightening work that they do to keep us safe. And they need to give them the respect and the space they need to do their job well and properly. If they take the time to do that, what they will see are officers who are human, who are overwhelmingly doing the right thing for the right reasons, and who are too often operating in communities and facing challenges most of us choose to drive around. I am Mobile, Alabama Police Chief James Barber. In 2014, the civil unrest, riots, and murders of police officers began to spread across the United States. FBI Special Agent in Charge Robert Lasky, United States Attorney Kenyon Brown, and I look to our communities for ways to preserve peace and dignity. Community leaders, pastors, and citizens identified encounters between law enforcement officers and young people that can escalate into unpleasant words, unplanned arrests, or even harm to citizens or police officers as a major concern. They said bringing law enforcement officers and young people together to learn about each other and how to be safe would make a big difference. Using assets from the Mobile Police Department, the FBI, and the U.S. Attorney's Office, we developed a program that bridges the gap between youth and law enforcement. It builds mutual respect between young people and police officers. Police citizen cooperation and plays an important role in fostering the trust that is necessary for our communities to be safe. The program is one of several programs that are helping the Mobile Police Department reach the ambitious goal of making Mobile the safest city in America with respect for everyone. We would like to share it with you. The program implements FBI Director Comey's statement that young people and law enforcement officers need to see each other as human beings and understand their different points of view. Law enforcement officers must demonstrate trust and its significance to this dynamic. They need to explain the importance of the law enforcement citizen relationship, demonstrate their focus on maintaining public safety, explain their obligation to control encounters so everybody stays safe, and educate them as to the laws they operate under. In addition, they must also dispel myths associated with law enforcement, such as the widely held belief that law enforcement officers can't enter a home without a warrant or permission when they can also enter under exigent circumstances. They need to help young people forget the violent video games where the dead come back to life and help them understand the harsh realities in the permanent destruction delivered by weapons such as powerful homemade bombs, as well as handguns that maim and kill both the citizens and law enforcement officers. The personal contact with the officers, their willingness to listen to the students' point of view, and the respect they show the students creates a candid two-way communication that replaces notions of injustice and discrimination with experiences of fairness and equality. Young people develop the confidence to resist those who try to entice them into using illegal drugs and committing other crimes. Bringing people together is a powerful force. When they see each other, talk to each other, hear about each other's dreams and frustrations, they realize that they have a lot in common. The program does exactly that. It does it across the divide between young people and adults between students and law enforcement officers. 
The most important thing about the program is that when young people and law enforcement officers are in a non-adversarial situation, new thinking occurs. Officers realize that the experience of young people or their friends that set their thinking about law enforcement are actually real to them and may need to be replaced with good experiences. Young people realize that it is unsafe for them, the officer, and the community to vent their anger at officers doing their duty or try to take control of situations where they have no authority to do so and may subject themselves to unnecessary arrest. We match the program's agenda to the times we live in. The initial discussion goes right at the subject that concerns everybody, the use of force and the escalation that leads to the use of deadly force. The law and its application in different circumstances are reviewed. Law enforcement situation control techniques used to lower stress levels for all involved in de-escalate situations are described. Under normal circumstances, law enforcement officers can't enter a residence without a warrant. But if they have been told about or see indications of violence or injury, they must enter to ensure the safety of everyone present. Standing in their way or arguing with them may result in arrest, as happened in this scenario. Notice how smoothly the encounter goes when the individual cooperates and moves out of the way. From the law enforcement officer's point of view, there is no such thing as a routine traffic stop. Following an officer's instructions at a traffic stop is vital. Failing to comply with an officer's order to put hands where he can see them or stay in a vehicle raises the alarm for the law enforcement officer. The law enforcement officer doesn't know this driver's intentions. Refusal to follow instructions can lead to soft contact or hard contact or even arrest when all the officer intended to do was asking to use his seatbelt. Complying with officer's instructions means a quick and less stressful traffic stop and may save a life. Law enforcement officers who stop young people on the street are often responding to calls from citizens reporting suspicious behavior. Running from a street encounter with law enforcement officers raises officers' concerns. It signals to them that a young person may be truant from school, have illegal drugs in their pocket, or are carrying an illegal gun. They are required to pursue you. Relaxing and answering their questions truthfully will keep you and the officers safe. Seeing their teacher or chaperone experience how quickly a situation can escalate from less than lethal force to deadly force is a revelation to most young people. They are amazed at the short time officers have to make a decision to use or not to use lethal force. Defiance or resisting is the wrong way to make a complaint against a law enforcement officer. The program teaches young people the proper way to file complaints. Law enforcement agencies have strict procedures that require careful review of all complaints and they take action when warranted. Young people also learn that the FBI is responsible for investigating civil rights violations and how to pursue complaints related to excessive use of force. Special Agent in Charge Robert Lasky, U.S. Attorney Kenyon Brown, and I hope you will consider the program as part of your organization's community involvement. An application guide is available from your local FBI field office. FBI assets and personnel are available to you for the program's training sessions. I'm Robert Anderson, Executive Assistant Director of the FBI. During my nearly 30 years in law enforcement, beginning as a Delaware State Trooper and later as a Special Agent, I've seen many changes in policing. When I joined the State Police as a 21-year-old in 1987, the tools we had are nowhere near what we see on the streets today. Today's police officers may carry a lot more tools on their belt, but they face a lot more scrutiny as well. Today, you have to assume that every encounter you have with the public will be recorded, whether on your department's own camera, a nearby security camera, or the cell phone of a passerby. You can do everything right and by the book, but your actions can be interpreted very differently by others. Because of the massive impact of social media in our society, you need to be mindful of how your actions will be viewed in the court of public opinion. So you need to go above and beyond. An example could be rendering medical aid to a subject after he has been incapacitated. It may not be required by your department, but it's the right thing to do. 
This awareness, along with the techniques and mutual understanding generated by programs like this, can go a long way towards building relationships between law enforcement and those we protect on a daily basis. I encourage you to use this program as a study in best practices and launch your own impactful program for the youth in your community. It's not an easy conversation to start, but it's necessary. It's what we need to navigate this new frontier of public's interaction with law enforcement, and in doing so, how we and can continue to make our communities better and safer places to live. Thank you for all that you do in putting your lives on the line each day to protect the people that we serve.